Hopefully my shit doesn't fuck up. Camera seems to be working. I'm just hopefully it doesn't quit working on us again. Well, well, I hope your camera keeps working. <laughs> yeah, I mean the the nice thing is the audio still works, but the the camera goes out. It's not seeming affected. I'm just I'm on I got my Twitch pulled up here, so I'm just gonna make sure yeah. see when it, I'm gonna wait to see when it goes live. And then, oh, here we are. Okay, so we are live. So all right, cool. Um. Yes. All right. All right, guys. So, um, as always, this isn't the official show yet, but we are recording it. I'm messing with my mic here. My thing is loose. It's bothering me now. I don't know why I'm doing this on the air and not before we start the show. But uh, this is uh, we are live on Twitch now. Um, but this isn't the official show show yet for the audio listeners. Um, I'll and I'll post it later for the audio version only. Maybe edited it so this part will be cut out. But um, I don't edit the live version, so. Whatever happens, it's live, you know, it's raw. Um, uh, so whatever happens, happens. The gable's got to walk away. My dog goes crazy because my neighbor decides to do something stupid. I can't cut it out. It's, it's, it is what it is. Um, but this is the uh, uh, this is the visual version. So um, here in a few seconds, Gables and I will start the actual main show. But just want to throw that out there for you guys. Uh, and then we are obviously live on Twitch right now. Twitch.tv slash Drunk Nerds Podcast or um, if you want to, uh, if you want to watch it later or whatever, or check out our, our Twitch channel, just go to, just search drunk nerds. So reason if you type in drunk nerds podcast, we don't show up, type in drunk nerds. First one that pops up. Uh, interesting. Uh, so yeah, um, here we are, uh, going to put a few second pause in here and then I will actually start the, uh, main show. Uh, one second. What the hell is this? What's going on? We have a, someone put a thing in our chat. Really? Apparently, I got, I don't know how what the hell's going on here. Wait, I just want to see this. What's your thoughts about moral rel- relativism? I don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. So uh, I don't know. That's my thoughts. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, so, anyways. Um, Gonna put a gap in here and then we will start the show. Sorry for you people listening. Uh, okay. I don't remember how I did the intro now of the show. I'm just thinking, how the fuck do I start the show? <laughs> I don't know what I do. <laughs> so, I'm, just like, I'm so used to this doing the countdown and then bam, I just go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode. I don't know, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll just, we'll just, we're, gonna, we're doing it live, guys. This is weird to me. All right. All right. I got it now. I remember, I remember how to do it. I forgot it already. I already forgot how to do it. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead. I was gonna do no, the. You go ahead, man. Uh, you're the you're the one that. Sorry, I was just like I was like all right, I was putting the gap in there for for the for the audio version when I edit it. All right, here we go. I'm gonna do it now. I always don't woke up as a, oh wow, I was really loud there. I don't know why I yelled. All right, I'll do that again. This is what happens. Usually I cut the shit out. This uh, usually takes me a couple tries because I just got to do it fast. I can't just do it slow. I just got to go. I got to do it fast. I got one take. Um, all right, do it again. I always don't woke up so drunk. Uh, wow, I can't do it. It's been a long day. It's been a long day, guys. I just got off work a little bit ago and then we've been talking about football for the last two hours. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode 407 of Drug Testers Podcast. I'm host, as always, and I'm Tyler. Joining me, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sir Colonel Gables. I'm all thrown off. I'm all out of sorts right now. How you doing, buddy? Well, <laughs> well, Tyler, let me tell you, man. I'm doing excellent. I'm feeling very chill tonight. Got work done out of the picture. And all I'm thinking about right now is getting back to playing some Cyber Shadow. Because let me tell you something. Cyber Shadow, that game released this past week. You can play it for free on Game Pass. Well, actually, you have to pay for Game Pass in order to play the game. But it's on Switch, I believe Steam as well. And let me tell you something. That game is every bit of worth it. I'll go a little bit more into detail once we start, start talking about what games we've been playing. But, yeah, I'm still just processing the whole 
deals and stuff like that for uh, the Detroit Lions and the LA Rams. It's yeah. like what Tyler and I were saying. We were talking a little bit about football before the show. Not trying to bore anybody in this regards, but uh, I still feel the Rams gave way too much to get Matthew Stafford from the Lions. But that's just personally my opinion. But yeah. I'm doing pretty good, man. How about yourself? Doing okay. You know, it's Saturday night. We're doing this. You know, Saturday night. Good night to fight. Um, quote Sir Elton John. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm doing okay. Uh, just got off work a little bit ago. Before we, well, basically got off work, took a shower, and then hopped right on the Skype call with you. Uh, so, you know, it's Saturday night. Like I said, we're doing this. Usually we do it Sunday. We're doing it Saturday night because uh, I wanted to uh, torture myself and watch the WWE Royal Rumble. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on with that. So it's a slam on Saturday night, man. No. Yeah, slam on Saturday, <laughs> and then we're gonna have the Royal Rumble on Sunday. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I'm doing okay. Otherwise, you know, I'm a little tired, but I'm drinking. I've been wanting to tell you this, Gables. It's, it's killing me not to tell you. Um, what? I'm drinking this beer. I've been trying to hide the name from okay. you. I'm gonna show you the name now. Oh no! What the hell? <laughs> Gable beer. Gable beer. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. I don't that. either. The Gables, you taste pretty good. I'm not going to lie to you. It's brewed right here in Iowa. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, that was slightly unexpected. Mm, not bad. Not bad. When it hits the tongue. It just tastes right. You know, it just feels right. It feels good. 10 out of 10 mouthfeel, Gables. 10 out of 10 mouthfeel. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But, no, I'm doing okay. I, I bought a 12-pack because that's – the only way you could buy it. I was like, I don't, I don't want a whole, like this beer sucks. I'm going to be really pissed because <laughs> I'm like, I don't even, I don't even look up what kind of beer it is. I actually don't even know. Um, uh, Munich style hails. <laughs> important before you had to drink it. Yeah. Like, what no, am I drinking? you know, for the bit, it's worth it. It's, it's all for the bit, you know, you know I do it all for the gram to uh, quote that one guy that sings Roxanne, uh, not the police. Um, <laughs> but anyways, uh, I, I listen to a lot of, a lot of music because I'm in the car by myself a lot. So, uh, in podcasts, but, um, no, I'm doing okay. Uh, it's been a crazy week though. It's been a weird up and down week. I had, a, uh, you know, I deliver for both of my job. I have two jobs, delivered both of them. And, um, one of which I deliver packages for F- fucking nuts week, man. So first off one day got a flat tire. That sucked. Wasn't wow. a big deal. Nah, not a big deal. I mean, I, luckily I was like three miles away from a place, patched it, lost about an hour, but got back on the road, got done. Wasn't a big deal. Um, then uh, the next day, uh, I, I deliver in like the country area, the rural area of like south southern Iowa. So um, yeah, a lot of like gravel roads, country roads, shit like that. Not not well uh, kept for like the winter time. You know, snows, ice, shit like that. You're just kind of fucked for a few days. Uh, but there's there's roads called level B roads, which um, are basically like the roads that like only farmers use. Like they're not, they're literally just like dirt dirt roads. That if it snows, they don't get plowed. Uh, if it rains, they just turn like they literally just turn to mud. Well, typically when you go down when you go down a road, you'll see a sign that says rocks end blank miles ahead. So I'm like, okay, right. so that means you know usually it's like two miles. Sometimes you'll see a rare one. It's like three quarter miles uh, 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 rocks in, which means it goes from a gravel road to a level B, which means if it's rained or in the last three days don't go fuck down it because it's gonna be mud and it's a lot of mud right right and if it snowed recently don't go down either because it's not plowed so basically in the winter time you just don't go down it or if it's rain don't go down it just stay for just stay the fuck away from them. well i must have missed a sign i was going i was you know i was like a mile and a half away from my next delivery get get uh going gravel road totally fine go up a hill get to the top of the hill and it was the road was fine. There was barely any snow because it's been thirty something, so the, most of the snow has melted. As soon as I get to the top of the fucking hill, if I'm going like forty miles an hour, bam, fucking snow, six inches of snow. Shit, I'm in it. I can't reverse out because I'm in a piece of shit van. I'm like fuck. I got. I just gotta drive through it. It's downhill. Luckily, I can just hopefully I can drive through it and get the fuck out. And I'll be fine. Right. Drive through it, and about a mile in, and then it's still going downhill, and it kind of levels out. I'm like, okay, as long as I don't I'll just keep going, I'm fine. Keep momentum going, I'm fine. Then it, then the snow ends, and I, it's up a hill. What? And it's mud. Oh no! Get about halfway oh, up. The, no. I'm <laughs> fucking just flooring it. Halfway up the hill. Dies. Just not dies, but uh, momentum gone. Just stuck. Wow. Middle of fucking nowhere. Hour away from from the station. Um, 
it's five o'clock at night. We gotta be back by usually seven thirty. Uh, so with no, uh, like I had no data. I mean, I was able to make phone calls. That's literally all that I can do. Uh, I, that's all I like. Couldn't do like first world problems. Had no Twitter, no Facebook, shit like that. I was stuck there for three fucking hours waiting for someone to come get me. Oh <laughs> Luckily, and of all the, I was, I was, I was a quarter, less than a quarter mile away from the house I was trying to deliver to. I could see it. I delivered yeah. a package while I was waiting. <laughs> I'm like, fuck it, I'm here. Just fucking walk it. So I just well, walked it. Well. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm going through all this trouble. And the, the, they called the tow company. It's like, yeah, we can't get them out. You're, you just you have to find a farmer nearby. I'm trying to call farmers. There's no farmers. My boss drives all the way out there with his wife, who was gro- gro- there grocery shopping when I called him. He was super nice, but I could tell he's pissed. I don't blame him. You know, I'm, I'm an idiot. It's my fault. I fucked up. And, and uh, my boss gets there. He drove over an hour to come get me. As he pulls up, the guy that I was delivering to sees me. Drives down there in his fucking uh, his his truck and pulls me the fuck out. So are you yeah. kidding me? So my boss my boss uh, pulls up next to me and uh, he's like I'm you know I'm facing this way he's facing that way so his wife's in the passenger seat talking to me and I've had a couple questions I've had to ask him forever and I'm uh, like as his wife's glaring at me I'm like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask these questions I'm gonna let it go I'm like, I apologize to him like ten times but his wife's just fucking staring if looks can kill Gables if looks could kill I would have if if she could have snapped her fingers like Thanos and made me disappear, would have been gone. <laughs> just would have just vaporized Ooh, in the ether. That's a super awkward situation, yeah. man. I'm just like trying to listen to him and talk to him. He's trying to give me some advice, <laughs> shit like that. Like, learning situation, blah, blah, blah. You're new to this, blah, blah, blah. Shit happens. You know? And I'm like, yep. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what he said to me. I, I could, I, I got the gist of what he was saying to me. Don't, don't ask. Like, yeah. don't, I mean, if he would have asked me verbatim what he said, not a clue. Because I was like, Sitting there, like I'm just like I had a whole piece of I was like fucking uh Woody in uh Toy Story One where they, they put him in the sun and the, the sun puts a hole through his head. I was that I was that guy. That was I was Woody in a situation. She was the fucking sun with the mag- with the magnifying glass. <laughs> Putting like Buzz, the, the the douchebag kid from next door. That was me. I was that was me being with the hole through my head. Uh but uh yeah, it was a uh, fucking nut. It sucked. Really sucked. Don't recommend it, guys. Don't recommend it at all. Don't do that. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been a yeah, it's been up and down. You know, too, I mean, we had a snowstorm. That sucked. Made shit a couple of days, but Friday got everything done. That was nice. Then work today. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a fascinating week though, Gables. I we got we, I, you know I didn't want to talk about it, but I, I, every podcast I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. You know, driving by myself and stuff for um, you know, fifty plus hours every week, and um, I, they're, they cover a lot of things. You know. Everything you know, most mostly sports and video games, but they cover they talk about everything. You know, a lot of topical podcasts. Everybody's talking about Game Stock, Game Stop stocks. Sorry. Yep. Uh, easy for me to say. I love this cables. I love all of this. I there was like a like the first, like like I think it was like Tuesday this took off. Like Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm like this is fucking fantastic. Thursday, I'm like I can't. I'm I'm so tired of hearing people talk about it. Friday, Saturday, I I want more of this. I love this all it's so awesome i love every little bit of this it's so fucking funny it, it's just funny like listening to people bitch is like this is bullshit it's illegal fuck you guys fuck y'all <laughs> this is awesome i love it i don't want to hear any more bitching about hedge funds people fuck you guys you guys have sure. manipulated the stock for years and it's like now yeah. we figured out your fucking bullshit and we're doing it back to you motherfuckers so fuck you guys Oh, you guys lost, I know, you billionaires so lost awesome. some millions, of, you know, a couple million dollars or a couple hundred million dollars. <laughs> Fuck you. You still got billions more or hundreds of millions more. Like, right. And even though if they, even though they pretty much limited the Robinhood app by not even allowing people to buy the stocks, people just went on to other platforms yeah. and bought stocks anyway. Yeah. And that's bullshit too. <laughs> that just shows you how, like, it's hard not to, you know, it's hard not to talk about this again political. I mean, it's impossible not to, but it's like. I've, you know, I, I feel like I've been fairly open. I'm, I'm most, I'm not like super diehard liberal, liberal, but I'm left, you know, I'm, you know, I, I voted Democrat every year. I've been eligible to vote, uh, since 2008. Um, so four out of four. Uh, but it's like it, the, the last year, you know, going back to 2020, just really the last year, especially with the pandemic, you know, you show like. We, we, we've all known, like, we, we all talk about, but it's like we don't see it, you know, how shitty things are, how little they actually give a fuck about the vast majority of us, you know, 
the you know the and it's like you see in the last year where it's just like you see the cracks like they they always put like a little facade behind it and it's like oh well you still love these people blah 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 or you still vote for them you get passionate about it but it's like maybe there's there's probably some ones that go in there with good hearts and then this shit happens and the cha- things change there's probably people that still are legitimately give a shit but the vast majority they don't give a fuck you know you're, you know you hear about both sides like this before the pandemic in february before the official lockdown happened they knew it was coming but they were telling us oh no it's fine don't worry about it as they're selling off stock because they know fucking shit's about to go bad yep. and they're but they're they're lying in their pockets and that would be i mean we've, we fucking put um oh i just I blanked her name the um the fucking home lady the uh that does the show with snoop dogs now uh she went to jail for selling stock insider trading martha stewart, martha stewart. we put fucking martha stewart in jail for this shit we see these motherfuckers doing the exact same thing just last year, and and they're pretty much uh, no, pat on the hands. No one, gives, no one gives a fuck. No one cares. We don't. We just don't talk about it. And it's like when we hear these heads. It's like you hear about like, you know, you want to feel you want to feel a little bad for these people that like they invest. But it's like you hear about like these people like they do the short sell stuff or they do the stuff like this that like they artificially drive stock down to make money for themselves. Yep. And it's like. Yep. And then. W- redditors figured out how to do it to do it for themselves and now like oh that's illegal don't do that but it's like oh fuck you guys because you guys have been doing it forever and it's like now yep. you're just mad because we have this you know the, the stock the stock market has been this magical thing that like nobody understands like i've listened to a lot of podcasts I've listened to a dozen different ways about people explain this try to explain this and i don't i still don't fully understand it don't ask me to i, I get the gist but don't ask me to i under, explain it to you but i get the gist of it how it's all working and it's just like, we, you guys are just like the aura of the stock market has dropped a little bit. Like it's still confusing as fuck, but it's like it just shows you the bullshit that is the stock market. It's like w- you guys have been fucking us for years, for decades. To, to line your pockets, you know, to to give yourself a few hundred, a few hundred more, not just a few hundred million, a few hundred more million dollars when you got hundreds of millions or billions already. That just you're fucking mm-hmm. over the little guy. You're fucking us over to line your pockets more. When it's like I've I've worked for big companies before, where it's like I worked for one company, big giant tech tech company, for six years. I got one nineteen cent motherfucking raise in six years because every fucking year in my annual review they said, oh well we didn't make enough money. Meanwhile they made billions yep. of dollars, but the, the, but they didn't make enough to what the stock market wanted. Because because the millionaires the billionaires are mad they didn't make an, they made billions of dollars but didn't make they made eight billion instead of eight point three billion so you guys don't you guys aren't gonna you guys don't get raised you guys making eleven twelve bucks an hour we can't afford to pay you guys because the guys were these guys with millions in the that get that are making millions and billions well we just let them down or they didn't they only made this much instead of this much and it's like i've seen over for companies before where it's like they're having record profits and they're laying people off because they didn't make enough profits i i work yep. I, i've talked to people this fucking this last year where their company said well covid we can't give you raises or we can't only give you this much of a raise instead of what we're, we will we'll give you five percent of the raise we were supposed to give you because of covid meanwhile they were having record pro- multiple companies record profits because they were actually making money off fucking COVID. They're like they're better because of COVID, but because of, but they're using COVID as an argument for why they can't give us the little guys fucking right. money because well COVID. But meanwhile, we are making more money than ever before because of COVID, and things will never we're going things will not ever go. But we're, we're never going to make this profit again. But we're never going to go. We're never going to make what we were making before. We're, there's going to be a middle ground. We're gonna you know we were making ten million before. This year we're making twenty. We're gonna be making fifteen every fucking year, and it's. I'm going on a different range here, but it's like, to like to hear like the fucking hedge fund people go out and say, "This is bullshit. This isn't fair. This is illegal." It's like motherfuckers, fuck you guys. This you're just mad because people caught on what the fuck you're doing. So it's like I don't exactly like. And, and there's I'm not saying like, everybody the people that have legitimately lost their their money, that sucks. I'm sorry, but it, the stock market's all bullshit. It's gambling. It's it's really it's really is it's not much different than the casino, and. It's a one-sided gamble, pretty much. Yeah. It's like, 
you can put into it and stuff, but unless you're on the good graces of a lot of the people that are making the billions and stuff, you're not really going to see benefit anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's just frustrating. And it's like, I, I love all this. I love the memes. I love, like, I just love like the AMC shit, like just spike in like fucking, uh, I think like GameStop <laughs> ended up going like, like went from like five something dollars a share to like 453 was the highest I seen it at. At one point, and like wow. I was just like I'm in a truck all week kicking myself, like fuck, dude. If I would have just, if I would have put a hundred dollars in to GameStop a year ago, six months, excuse me, six months ago, and sold that off, I would have tens of thousands of dollars right now, tens of thousands yep. of dollars, probably maybe in the hundred. Like I, I heard about people like they, well, one guy was like he, he wrote into a, a podcast also too. He's like, he's like because uh, a podcast like he said like. Uh, a year and a half ago, he's like, because they were talking about GameStop hit record lows. It was like four dollars a share, and they said just like he's like, I'm not a stock guy, but it's like, I mean, yeah, GameStop is never going to be, you know, they're not going to be a top Fortune 500 company, but they're going to get better. It's going to, and they're talking about like how the consoles are going, the consoles are coming out next. This is 2019. I'm talking about this. It's like 2020, the new consoles are going to come out before COVID and all that too, but stocks can go up. You know, because new consoles, that's going to give you a bump. They might go, might it's $4 now, it might be $9, $10 now, later. You might make a little decent chunk of money. And so people actually listen to that and just like, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I can make, you know, a few hundred bucks out of this. Not thinking <laughs> they're going to make what they're making. One guy was like saying, he's like, because of you, I, I listened to you. I put a few hundred dollars in in GameStop stocks and turned around and sold it. And it's like, I paid for my three kids uh, to go to college. Wow. I have money put away. All three of my kids are going to go through college now. If they go to college, wow. I, got, I have like, like, and I've like, you hear about some people just, they paid off their college debt. They paid it all off. And it's like, it's, it's nice. Yeah, it's just, it's, I love it. Yeah. It's like, fuck. If I would have done that, man, that would like, if I would just put, like I said, a hundred dollars in, just bought 20 shares, 30 shares. I mean, at four <laughs> or $5 a piece. And I sold it at 400, say 400. I ain't going back to work on Monday. <laughs> I wouldn't have like, fuck it. As soon as the money hit my bank account. <laughs> Fuck y'all, bitches. I'm taking the year off. I'm paying all my shit off. I'm buying a house and I'm fucking sitting for a year. I'm eventually, I mean, it's not enough to like retire, but fuck, man. I'm no. not, I'm sitting at home for a year. I'm gonna, if I, if I don't die from a uh, fucking diabetic shock from eating Dairy Queen every day for dinner. <laughs> I don't know. I love all this shit, Gables. Uh, I don't feel sorry. Oh, I mean, man. I know some people lost money. Um, it's like we watch you guys fucking, you know, run this shit for years and it's hard not to feel bad. I know it's like the only reason it's gaming related is because it's GameStop and it could have been anybody like fucking yeah, Doge yeah. coins, which was a joke stock went up like something 700% blockbuster went bankrupt years ago, but they haven't fully liquidated, liquidated the stock. Their stock oh, went no. up 700%. They're not even in business anymore. Gables and their stock. There's went, only one blockbuster. No, it's it closed. Market. It closed last year. It closed last year. Oh, no. There's no GameStops left. <laughs> they their stock shot up. I love how like every time Elon Musk just tweets a fucking company name, their stock just skyrockets like thousand mm-hmm. percent. It's fucking. That's his influence. I love this. You know, it's like you know, I, 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 the more I think about it, it's just like it's like this country's been so divided the last five years. Pokemon Go is the last time yep. this country has felt good. The last time I've loved, yep. I love to be an American, and it's just like. I, you know, it's like, we're all together. We're all having a good fucking time. It's like, we've been completely divided the last five years and it's gotten worse the last year. Um, yes. And I feel like for the first time in a long time, Gables, I'm like, we're, it's not what it was, but it's getting there. It's like, oh, this is fucking awesome. Like mm-hmm. this it's like, man, this isn't, this is like not a, around the cusp of something yeah, excellent. This isn't a party thing. This isn't a race thing. This isn't a gender thing. This isn't a fucking anything. This is a class thing. This is like, you guys have fucked us for years. And it's like people, like good people, hard workers that make fifteen dollars an hour of lost jobs because you guys want to fucking line your pockets to make a couple million more when you've already got billions in the bank, and now we're fucking you back. And fuck y'all, bitches. <laughs> I love it. That being said, if any of you guys want to buy us for forty million dollars, yeah, I'm willing, I'm willing to listen to offers. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> I should make Drunk Dash Nerds podcast stocks. See what happens there, and this or, like, hey, Elon Musk. Say if Elon Musk wants yeah. to shout us out, yeah, yeah we would just, appreciate I that just too. retweet <laughs> our just retweet the our Twitch TV uh, link, and just like, I'm I'm selling all my shares immediately, Gables. 
somebody else will own us next week. I, if, I we might, I don't know. Oh my God. I wouldn't even care. Dude, it'd be funny. It'd be like Elon Musk, like lurking around on discord things and stuff like that. Just checking things out or whatever. And like, uh, you know, just mentioning Cyberpunk 2077, all of a sudden the stocks of that going up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would fucking love it. That'd be amazing. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I love all this. And it's just like, it's, you know, I just love all the, like, the, hold the line, people. Hold the line. People are like, I'm going to sell now. I'm losing my shit. And it's like, like, I was listening to one podcast and the guy's like, he's like, dude, I was having a mental breakdown. I was, I was down six grand. And I was like, I was about to just sell everything right there. And just like, and then like, he was like, uh, 20 minutes later, I refreshed. I was up twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> it's like it just shows you how fucking nuts it is. <laughs> it's insane. like, yeah, it's like, oh my god. Um, but yeah, I, I, I imagine this the virtual shitting of the pants. Yeah, <laughs> I, I love all this. It's just, uh, it's it's so funny. I, I, it's, it's brought me more joy than probably anything has in a long time. Uh, mm. yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, even you want to say Gables on it. Oh no, I'm I'm perfectly content. You know, it's like I've been hearing a lot of this stuff too of the GameStop like stocks and stuff and how that's been going down. And I'm absolutely loving a bunch of these headstock people just getting the fucking shaft like they deserve. Yeah. So that's all pretty much from me. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 good times. It's good times. Um, but Gables, you know, this is then typically a video game podcast. Uh, but you know, like I said, right. the only reason that we even mentioned is because tangentially it was. GameStop, that was it. Because it's GameStop, but it could have been like I said, it could have been anybody. I mean, Dogecoin, like I said. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, not a crazy week for gaming news. Uh, this is like the craziest thing, gaming wise, probably. And it's not even really, barely gaming wise, as the GameStop stocks. Uh, although I was having a good time laughing to myself, and, like wishing I was good at Photoshop because I would totally make the YouTube header like the the I can't remember what it's called, but like the the picture you see when you look at our our YouTube link. And it'd be Gabe Stocks, but it'd just be like that meme of stonks, but it'd be a picture of your face. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like having a good laugh at myself. Man, if I knew Photoshop, oh, I would just no. put your face on that meme, and it would just be the the the, the, the arrow pointing up. Gabe Stocks. Uh, Gabe Stocks are going crazy, guys. Oh, that's what I should do. God. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make Gabe Stocks. Gabe Stocks. <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna be worth billions of dollars, but you're not gonna have any fucking stocks in it because I'm gonna have them all. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit but uh yeah now, anyways this is the uh, Drunk Nestor podcast where we talk about video games and I drink uh, beer named after Gables <laughs> uh, this is my third one I'm very tired and I just realized I haven't ate today I haven't ate today I, wow I, I know well I, I, I worked I got up I went to work I got off work we talked about football for an hour and a half and then we talk about game socks yeah. for another 20 minutes. And now I'm here drinking fucking Gables beer. <laughs> <laughs> Just swishing a little bit of Gables in your mouth. I got, yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, you know, I recommend that for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of hit me. That one it was a delay hit. It was like that one just took a few minutes to kind of to kind of click there. A little swish, a little gables in your mouth. This is it's. This is turning into a very horny podcast. <laughs> Two weeks ago, it was I named it because we talked about furries. Last week, we talked about people stepping on us, and then this week, it's just swishing gables in your mouth. Uh, this is a refrain was stepping on. Ooh, but not for me. Yeah. <laughs> Gables, don't don't try to take yourself out of this. You were a part of it. You 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 could have stopped it any time. You didn't do it. And don't act like you don't want her to step on you. Because <laughs> I'm gonna put I'm gonna buy you a cat suit and I'm gonna hire a seven foot tall woman to come to your house and step on you. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine. I could just imagine like my elderly mom just going to the door and saying, "Who is this?" It's like, "Hey, if it's for you." <laughs> I'm like what? The fuck? It's gonna, it's just gonna, it's gonna be a, a card for me. There's gonna be a box, and it's gonna say "Ring the Bell," and you're gonna ring the bell, and then so a seven foot tall woman's gonna show up in a fucking uh, cat suit. That's what I want. <laughs> and that would legit creep me. Out. It'd be like that episode of Futurama where they all get Snoop Snoop. <laughs> no, oh no, the, the Amazonists. <laughs> With the Amazon women? Oh, oh man, it's my one of my favorite episodes. I don't know what's going on with this podcast anymore. We it's just lost control. We some we we, we All right. some we get we get video and then it was just it just gets horny. Um. <laughs> All right. Well, what 
gaming topics do we have on the agenda this week? Not a lot, Gables. Let's keep talking about kinks, okay? <laughs> anyway, no. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. Uh, so, first off, not a lot too much to say on this one. Uh, Returnal, which was supposed to come out March 19th, which was the it was, is the second official PS5 only game coming to PS5. Uh, it's the uh, right. Housemark guys. Uh, their game got delayed from March 19th to April 30th. Um, just need more time for development. Uh, but we're in that time now where it's just like, I mean, like it's po- we're in that post cyberpunk world where, you know, I think for the most part, people weren't too upset about delays anymore. And in this case, after cyberpunk, no one's ever going to complain about delay for the next like five. Like you're all golden on delays for the next, like, you can delay the game for a whole fuck. Like your games come out tomorrow and like, ah, you know what? We're going to delay it a year guys. Like, you know what? That's okay. You do you do what you do. You do you. You do what you do. We're at that point where it's okay to delay your games now because of how bad Cyberpunk's mm-hmm. launch was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just hit the mainstream now. Where it's like, you know, I think from hardcore gamers too. People that listen to podcasts like this or listen to video game podcasts in general, it's like, nah, that's okay. To like people that like the mainstream, like the people that just buy their games, play their games, don't really listen to anything, and just now, now they're like, oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, it's just like I, I was thinking about it too, where it's like. I think that's just like a rite of passage for PlayStation games to get delayed like five weeks, like a month before launch where it's like last of us one got delayed six weeks, like a couple months before launch. I think of a uh, uncharted four got delayed six weeks right, right, right. before launch. Uh, fucking last of us part two and ghost of Shima both got two month delays right before launch. Uh, and last of us part two actually got another, got two, two month delays right before launch. I mean, it's just like, if God of War, same thing, got delayed like five weeks uh, right before launch. Like, if you're not getting delayed like a month before launch, an additional five weeks, there's something wrong with your game. That's just, just <laughs> it's what it is. Days gone, didn't get delayed five weeks before launch. Came out, right. no one cared. Just no one cared. That's Justin. Justin loves that Too game. Much. That's it. Justin's the only one that loves that game. Nobody else cares. I'm just I'm fucking with you. Love you, Justin. I know he's listening. <laughs> Fuck you, Justin. Love you. Miss you. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, it's fine. It's whatever. I, like I said, I don't have much to say. But I, I'm, I was actually like really, I was, I was talking about last time they put a trailer out like a month or so ago. It was a gameplay trailer. It kind of took a deep dive and I like, I really enjoyed it for even being a roguelike. And I was like, oh, fuck yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check this game. I want to I buy this game. I looked at 70 bucks. Yeah, I'll wait. I'll wait. I want to hear what people say about it. You know, it's like, yeah, that's too much. This is one of those cases where like, typically I'm like all in. I'll just, you know, I, I'm, I'm the guy that buys shit on day one. I don't, don't typically wait for games. And this is one of those cases. I'm like, you know what? I'll wait. If it was like 40 bucks, I probably would have bought it already. But, uh, I don't know. It's, I want to see. Cause I mean, it's weird. Cause like roguelikes, like for the most part, you can probably, I mean, if you can get through that game, you can beat it in an hour, hour and a half. I look at a game like Hades. You can beat that game in an hour. Once you can finally beat it, it just takes you five, six hours to get to the point where you can beat it. And the, but that game's twenty dollars. You look at some of the best roguelikes out there; those games are usually they're not full price games, and they're you, know, you can fly. You can once you get there and beat them, you can beat them in a, uh, an hour or so. Because I mean, who the fuck wants to play a six hour right. long roguelike? I mean, if you die, you got you four hours in, you die, and you got to replay that whole section again. I mean, obviously you can beat it faster than that, but I don't know. it's just. I want to, I want... But at the case in point with Returnal right here, I mean, it's being delayed, right? It's a seventy dollar game. It's a new IP. It's a roguelike, and we don't know the quality of the gameplay in and of itself. Yeah. We've only seen little bits and trailers and bits of gameplays through other videos, like on websites and on YouTube and stuff. But that's a hard sell, even if you're a new owner for a new system like the PS5. You know, it's a hard sell at the moment. So this is going to be a game that's going to be heavily viewed in terms of uh, YouTubers, game reviewers, and whatsoever, because even so that... Like I said before, it's a hard sell based on the premise as it's a new IP. You don't know the quality of the gameplay. It looks pretty, but it's also a launch period game for the PS5. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's just it's a wait and see kind of approach. Like I, 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 I think it'll end up being a pretty good game, but seventy dollars. I mean, that's just kind of like I'm not it's like I said. Even at the time, like when they announced games were going up ten dollars, I wasn't super upset about it whatever things go up paychecks doesn't go up things go up though everything else goes up but anyways yeah. um you know i'm not super upset but it's like it's like i said it's like i said at the time it's like it, you're gonna stop and think about it a little bit more same thing happened when we went from 50 to 60 where it's like you know 10 bucks doesn't sound like a lot but it's like if the game turns out to be great you won't remember the fact that it was 60 dollars. if the game turns out to be bad or it's whatever that 
that extra ten dollars sticks out and you're sticking your crawl a little bit more than before. So it's like maybe in Well that's very true too. Yeah, maybe in three, four years when it's seventy dollars just feels like the norm, maybe that things will change. But we're we're in that that phase where it's like most things are sixty dollars. Um so I don't know. We'll wait and see. But uh I hope it's good. I want it to be good. I think it looks really good. I just it's this right. how Smart went from being the top down twin shooter guys to this is something we never seen from before. I mean, yeah, but I don't know. But um Moving on to some Xbox news here, Gables. So Game Pass okay. has announced, or uh, Xbox has announced that Game Pass has uh, now, as of uh, the end of December, over 18 million subscribers. Um, this, Not surprised. At the end of uh, September, they had 15 million. And I believe it was an, uh, at the end of March, they were, last March, they were at, uh, I, think, I think it was 10 million, I want to say. I can't find the exact number. But, um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's awesome to hear that, you know, Game Pass is going up. Uh, you know, it makes you wonder like where would they be if they had Halo at launch instead? Um, you know, instead of um, mm. did they have anything that was exclusive? I'm not trying to be. I'm not even trying they to be. They didn't really have a lot of games that were exclusive. Yeah, Medium just came the out launch of that game yesterday, Friday, Friday. I think it's Thursday or Friday. Well, yes, the Medium just but, released, but I think that's the actual. I want to say that's the actual first exclusive first party. Not first party, but it's like the first exclusive like Xbox Series X yeah, game the first that released on Game Exclusive Pass, Series game. I'm trying to think if they had a uh, Xbox exclusive game that like, launch. I don't think they did. Um, uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, so it's like it makes you wonder like if they had something at launch. Even even not even Halo, but like just something. In, I mean, I'm trying I'm not even trying to take shots here. I'm just I'm just being honest. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's good to see nerves going up. Uh, I don't know what they want it to be, but. Uh, yeah, I think it's good. I, I think, Game Pass like we always thought, it's the best deal in gaming, and that's their that's their catchphrase. But it's true. There's, there's there's some facts behind that. It's great. There's some really good games on there. Um, you know, they just added EA Play mm-hmm. for no extra cost. They have the uh, the cloud streaming stuff for no extra cost. Uh, like there's yeah. some good stuff in there. But it's like, we're at the point now. I feel like we're like you know we keep saying it. We keep saying it. We keep saying it. It's like they got everything. Everything else is in their favor, over PlayStation over Nintendo, but the games. That's the thing they're yeah. they are miles behind on, but it's like you look at like like Nintendo and PlayStation like they don't have to do Game Pass because they have they know all their games are gonna sell fucking insanely well. I mean Nintendo extremely especially so, and it's like they don't have the to. The first do party that. because of that Nintendo Premium, that Nintendo quality yeah. in regards to what they've marketed as over the years that leads to people wanting to buy up their games literally like that and why they don't have to do a lot of price reductions for the first party titles because they know people are going to buy it based upon the ip itself a mario a pokemon a zelda in that regards in terms of say xbox to where you do have first party games they but because of the xbox one generation they came out every few and far between you got maybe a few that sell consistently well with Mm. gears with forza and stuff but also when halo was actually was in its prime once on the 360 that games, the, those games sold like gangbusters, especially Halo 3. Yeah. Because that was the best. That was their peak for that Halo series. Oh, but yeah. other than that, you look at what they got now with now 18 million subscribers plus on their Game Pass and stuff. It's a no-brainer because it's quintessential, like you were saying. It is the best deal in gaming in regards to that with them not going through and trying to increase costs of yearly subscriptions. But... Even with them going back on that and stuff, you're still left with a enticing package for any type of new, like Xbox, like uh, console owner. If they really just wanted just to use Game Pass for the entire year, and spend the 120 or whatever the hell type of dollars that you can spend. I think on uh, Amazon, there's actually a card where you can buy a full year of Game Pass, and I want to say that it was like around 120 dollars or a hundred and something dollars i'm not sure yeah that's probably like game pass ultimate though it's probably just regular game pass but still i think it's i think it's game pass ultimate yeah i think you're right on that but at the same point that's only the price of maybe two games at most retail and here you are getting like a catalog of over 100 plus games some of which are full on like 15 20 even up to 60 dollars brand new that you're gaining access for like as a rental service for like a limited time yeah so it doesn't surprise me it's done this well with this much subscribers. And plus, because of that, you got games day on date. You know, like Cyber Shadow just released this past week that was published by Yacht Club Games, the makers of Shovel Knight and stuff. So it's like, 
having that type of access, that's the type of edge they have over a Sony or a Nintendo right now is a bunch of their exclusive content they can do day one for pretty much for subscribers of Game Pass Ultimate in general. So, yeah, it's it's nice to see them succeeding in that retrospect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just like it's like I, I we've talked about like two of our top 10 games from last year were Game Pass games. You know, Street yes. Rage 4 and Battletoads games like I probably would have I probably would have bought Street Rage 4 regardless. But I mean, the fact it was on Game Pass, I look at like right. a game and uh, my one of my, a game that was uh, after party a game that was on my top 10 list in 2019 was a game I was like, super looking forward to already it was on Game Pass. So it's like and, and you know, I've, there's other games I've checked out and just dabbled in here and there because it was on Game Pass. Like a game like Gears 5, I would I would my game of the year 2019. Uh, I would a game I would have bought day one on Game Pass. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it. It's great when that happens, but it's like, and there, I think it's a little different for you know for guys you know for us because usually if there's a game that we want, we just buy it. You know, we don't wait. wait you True. know, games come out years later. Like Control just came out on Game Pass, uh, I think last month or this month, and um, you know that one, you know, like if I, I would have been super excited for that if uh, if I hadn't played it when it, I bought it at launch. But it's like I think it's a fantastic game if you haven't played right. it, play it. But um, yeah, at a certain point though, it's like. You know, this can't be. I heard someone. I can't remember where I heard from, uh, but someone said like, you know, like we have Netflix because of those great exclusive things you can only get on Netflix. Like same, you know, HBO Max. Like people go there because of these great exclusive things. You know, like we want to see these great documentaries, these great shows, these great movies that you can only get there. Um, and then all the other stuff that's not exclusive to them, that's just kind of the filler stuff that keeps us around, but it's not what we go there for you know it's like netflix just passed 200 subscri- 200 million subscribers and i'm not saying xbox it's way big way b- bigger for different things with netflix is you, you, you could do on any device i guess xbox you can kind of get there now but it's like gaming streaming is two different things everybody streams everybody games anyways i'm going off on a tangent but with xbox where it's like at a certain point you got to get to the point where like these are games maybe you can't only get on game pass but like you know like you need more shit like gears 5 you can need more regularly uh, balanced things of Gears 5. You can't just have a Gears 5 or Forza Horizon 3 once a year and then nothing after that. You know, it's like no. 2020, we had, I mean, look at 2020. What was the biggest game that came on Game Pass? Ori? I mean, no disrespect to Ori. That's a lot of people's game of the year, but it's not It's not a uh, a big mover. Like, that's games that we love. And there's, you know, that's not things that, you know, like I said, I was just talking about like, you know, we were like, when we hear delays, it's like, eh, whatever. But like, you know, people that are like, that just go, they go to Walmart, look at a game or just see the commercials on TV, buy the big game they hear about, you know, but it's like that when Cyberpunk got fucked up at launch, that changed the game for delays. And it's like, you, they need that game. Like and Halo is probably going to be that game where it's like, this changes Game Pass where it's like, I'm sure everybody's heard of Game Pass, but it's like, no one's needed a reason to get Game Pass yet. Halo can be that reason, but then you also need a, a steady regimen of games like that to keep keep us going, come back more and more. To so like we're like Game Pass is just something we have. It's not something I pick up for a month or buy a three month card right. and have, and then come back later when the next game comes out. Like you need to find that, and like we we've talked about for a couple of years now, when they buy all the studios. Like maybe we can get to that point, but it's like when's that point gonna happen? Because like we've been talking about it for a couple of years now, where it's like. When these games are gonna hit? We keep saying when these games hit, when and they start coming out on a regular basis, it's gonna be nuts. But we keep saying when. When's when gonna happen? You know, it's like I like I said, I'm not trying to bash on Xbox. Like I, I have an Xbox One X. I want a reason to get a Series X. You know, like I've had a couple opportunities now where I've had it on my cart. God knows if, if I clicked the buy button if it went through. But it's like I'm like no, nah, I, I don't. I can't. It's like I can't. Argue, I can't make a good reason to buy this, you know. It's like, can I afford it? Yeah, but it's like, well, I'll just sit like I, I bought the one Xbox One S. I bought the Xbox One X. It's like, I barely play it. You know, like I, I don't play it now. Why would I play it? Why would I buy a Series X? What would that change? You know, it's like I want that reason. You know, it's like, it's easy to buy a PS5 when it's like, I know all these great games are coming, and they're gonna come out. Like they have proven to me that they're gonna come out. We're gonna get two, three bangers every year. Nintendo has proven to me. We're going to get two, three bangers every fucking year. You might have a gear where it's mm-hmm. like, eh, you get one banger, you know, but 
for the most part, you can get two, three bangers every fucking year. Um, you know, when Xbox needs that and they need that, like they need those two, three bangers every year. Then they need a lot of, you know, those double A games that come out to kind of keep us coming, keep us coming back. And just, it's a thing now. Cause there's, I mean, there's months where I, I'll have, I have Netflix and I don't even look at it. I'll go six weeks without looking at it, yeah. but I just have it. It's just like, it's just nice to have. And I think, yeah, I mean, everybody, it's the same way. I, I, just, I do that too. Yeah. Like, I've, I've done that too quite a bit of times. Yeah. It's like, I have, you know, I have, I, I, I just kind of went through a couple months, like about a month ago. And I was like, I have all the streaming services. I have YouTube TV. I have YouTube red. I have, or whatever it's called now. I have, um, uh, Netflix, Hulu, Disney plus Amazon prime. I have them all. And I'm just like, I was thinking about, I'm like, I don't even use how, like I'll go through spurts while I use one a lot and then I won't use it again. So it's like, I got rid of Hulu. It's like as soon as yeah. uh, WandaVision's over, I'm gonna get rid of Disney Plus. You know, it's like YouTube TV. I get it for the football season. I, it, it ends the week after the Super Bowl's over. Perfect timing. As soon as that's over, I'm gonna get rid of that. You know, it's like, but it's like that's just because like they don't have enough to keep me going back. Netflix though, I'm gonna keep. You know, Amazon Prime, I'm gonna keep. You know, it's like, and when shit comes back, I'll jump into them. But it's like I go, through, you know, I go through spurts. But it's like they need to find that reason. Like Netflix is king at that. They need to find that where they could be the king kings of that. I mean, they're the only ones doing the game like the this stuff like this. But I mean, I guess PlayStation now, but it's like that's something different. But it's a like game. Pa- I mean, it's a great service that has the potential to be game changing uh, for gaming. Uh, and I, I think it is. But it's just like when's it going to be a thing where it's like everybody's got to get on board where it's just like Netflix was that thing that changed every changed cable, changed everything, changed TV as we know it. When, I think Game Pass has the ability to be that, but when's it going to happen? You know, it's like, I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to make this a, like, I, I know it's like, you look at, you listen to this for long enough, it's like, Tyler, you are a fucking Sony pony. And maybe I am, but they kind of deserve it, because I, they, and I, I started, I, I put together my Games of the Generation list, Gables, I probably tell you that, like, I got, for the most part, put oh. together. I just gotta make, I just gotta put my talking, talking points in, but my list is put together, okay. and I'm like, fuck, Maybe I am a Sony pony. I don't know. Well, I was looking at the list. I'm like, Ugh. it's a lot of Sony shit. But it's like, I don't know. Like I said last week, it's like, to me, they are on. They don't have the lineage of a uh, of Nintendo. They don't have that 35 years of quality. But the last decade, the last they they have been on par, if not better, than Nintendo when it comes to first party shit. Um, I think for a lot of people, uh, you know, they that you can make the argument at least. You can put. You can, you know, you can, you can have that conversation where no one, no one's been able to do that ever before. And I feel like they are on they're They're in that conversation at the very least. Um, and I, I want Xbox to be there. Cause I, I, you know, I'm not, I always consider myself console agnostic for a long time. I hated Nintendo. I wouldn't buy a Nintendo console. Now I, you know, I'm a born again Nintendo fan. So I'll wait and see. I went on a weird tangent. I didn't mean to go on, but you know, here we are. So, uh, anyways, uh, anything you want to actually say? I'm sorry, Gables, before, before we move on. Um, actually, no. I'm actually pretty good with that regard. I think I said mostly what I wanted to say. Okay. <laughs> Gables. I'm just, this, this beer is so good. Gables, you make a good beer. <laughs> I'm going to bottle you up and drink you. Slurp you. <laughs> anyways, well, we just I was just talking about control. Speaking of control, uh, we don't usually do this. Um, I'll, I'll mention it. We'll, we'll mention it every so often, like we mentioned, like Bug Snacks coming to uh, PS Plus, like uh, Xbox Live Gold, like they're getting Gears Five is gonna be on there uh, on February first uh, for the month of February. But I wanted to mention uh, PS Plus for February, looking pretty good. Um, Control Ultimate Edition, uh, which Ultimate Edition is what you need to have the P- to play the PS Five and Xbox Series version. Um, is coming. Uh, Destruction All Stars, which was actually another seventy dollars game that's only on PS Five, that was supposed to be a launch game, and which 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 was we talked about back uh, when it got all of a sudden just got delayed. Uh, they said went from being a seventy seventy dollars launch game to being a PS Plus game coming in February. Um, is coming, and then also PS 4s uh, Concrete Genie, uh, I believe it came out twenty nineteen, which I heard a lot of people. Really enjoyed this game. It was like a $30, $40 game uh, that came out. Uh, these are the three PS Plus games for February, Gables. What's, what's your thoughts on this list? 
to be perfectly honest with you, I'm kind of half and half on it, but uh, not for the reasons that you would expect right here. I feel that it's a strong month in regards to people getting like a couple of free games, obviously, for the PS5. Concrete Genie is definitely underrated from what I've personally I've seen, but I have never played the game in and of itself hmm. because I'm not really too sure of the quality. From what I've been hearing from a lot of gamers online, it's like it's definitely an underrated game. It did use access. They did use a lot of like PlayStation VR stuff, I believe. But uh, and as far as like Control Ultimate Edition being free, I know there have been people that have been really upset by this because yeah. that game was supposed to be releasing on the PS5 during next week that ultimate edition and people pre-ordered that game and expected that game to be like, uh, you know, getting their PS five version, this and that they, there was people that held off getting the PS four version because they know this game was going to be coming on the PS five. And now a lot of those people are now asking for refunds because yeah. they could just get the PlayStation plus version and get the PS five version for free with yeah. that regards. Yeah. I am in the boat where, yeah, people should request the refunds with that because it's like if you basically had this like pre-ordered and you already paid it for digitally, say, on the PlayStation Store, I'm not really 100% sure how that operates on PSN, but you should be entitled to at least a refund in that retrospect because if the mortgage is already taken out and it's like a digital purchase, yeah, I understand. But if it's like a physical purchase, you know, that's kind of, Kind of a little bit different. You can always cancel your pre-order and get your money back in that respect. Yeah, which I've done with, pre with yeah, with regards to some retailers and stuff. Yeah. But uh, as for myself, it's like, well, I bought Control last year. I actually most recently bought the DLC for it for the PS4. Okay. So yeah, I definitely have all of that in that regard. So technically, even if I do like get the PlayStation Plus like stuff, which I'm going to do anyway, because why oh, not? Yeah, just add to but, your library, uh, don't download it. Because here's here's the fact of the matter that uh, I have here. I may not have a PlayStation 5, but now I have games like Bug Snacks. I have to redeem Maneater, obviously. Yeah, you do that for Tuesday. That, obviously, yes. And that's a good reminder for anyone listening to this podcast most than likely going to come out before Tuesday, but definitely if you have a oh, PS5 on, or even, or even, yes, or even if you go and log in on their website, you can actually redeem it. If you don't own a PS5, like the vast majority of us don't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, in one month, it's like you got Bug Snacks, you got Man Eater, you got that Destruction Derby, like all sorts of Destruction Derby thing, mm, and now all of a sudden you get Control. Destruction All Stars, yeah, thank you. And all of a sudden you get Control Ultimate Edition on top of that. You just basically just got four free PS5 games, quintessentially. Mm -hmm. Not to count any other types of uh, additions and stuff that you bought for PS4 that's like a free upgrade to PS5. But uh, it's definitely good in that retrospect and stuff. I think the only caveat that I would say is half and half is the whole aspect of those that have either bought Control Ultimate Edition for PS5 digitally before the announcement of uh, that game being free, the PlayStation 4 version, mind you. But uh, otherwise, taking that aside, this is actually a pretty solid month for PlayStation Plus. Yeah, no, I agree. And it's like, I've, you know, I'm, I'm someone that was, I spoke out very much so about the control thing because I bought the deluxe edition, whatever it's called. Uh -huh. I pre-ordered it, um, 2019. I love that game. And it, it it would have been much higher on my list if it ran better. That was my biggest complaint. Like I think it, it dropped right. quite a few spots because just it, the frame rate was ungodly bad. Like that game was mm -hmm. really great. It just was so riddled with technical technical issues that it it, it really hurt that game. But I, I think that game, if it ran the way it was supposed to run, would have been a game of the generation type game. Or it would have been at least in my top. Two or three that year for gaming. The game was fantastic. And, you know, I, I own the the DLC for. It. I just I try to go back and play it, but it's one of those games where it's like, um, you, like you don't you get out of the group of playing that game. It's just hard to jump back in, especially like right. late game stuff. And now you're playing post game stuff where it's like, you like it this it you put you, it's like you're playing the game like you've been playing. Like you just played the whole game through. And it's like you come back six months later. It's like 
how the fuck did I did this? What button does what now? What are these powers now? <laughs> it's like, I remember the same issue when I, when I went, jumped back into the Spider-Man DLC like months later. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, I forgot how to play. I forgot how to play this game completely. I forgot how to do everything. Um, and I do feel bad for those people. Like, I mean, I was pissed then that you know, they made this adult Swim edition. They hid the fucking uh, the PS5 version and the Xbox Series version behind it. But it's like, now I feel bad for the people that, that bought. Imagine if you bought the control PS4 edition. Then you bought the Ultimate Edition because you're like, oh, I want to play, I want to play on PS5. And then, oh, no, we're just going to give it away for free. It's like because <laughs> the, the PS5 version is not – the Xbox Series version and the PS5 version not technically does not actually come out until February 2nd. That's the launch date. That's true. For, the, for that version. And they just put it behind – like if, you, if you're on PlayStation, you could have just got it for free this whole time. Uh, I believe the control that's on – Game Pass is just the regular control. I don't know if it's the Ultimate Edition, so I don't think it doesn't. You won't get the free upgrade to the Series version. It'll just be the Xbox One version. Um, still will run way better. Still be better if you're playing on a Series console. I'm sure it runs way better than what it did then. But it's like, I mean, that's bullshit. It's frustrating. Um, but I mean, just kind of looking at it from this this list though, wise like, uh, Conquer Genie is a game I've wanted to play multiple times. Like I've, I've seen it on sale, and I'm just like. It's in bad timing. It's like I got, I've already, I had a, you know, a shit ton of games I wanted to play. And I was like, ah, if I, it's gonna be one of those games I buy and I just never actually play. Um, mm-hmm. So that's awesome again for free. That's a game I definitely want to check out because I've, I've, I think I remember, I know Justin played it. I think he beat it. And I believe he liked it. I need to talk to him about that. Uh, I just need to talk to him in general. It's been a while. Uh, love you, Justin. Miss you. Call me. <laughs> Anyways, um, but uh. Yeah, I, that's a, that's a, that's a game I do want to check out. Looks, I, I just love the art style behind that game. Um, Control, I, I, I want to play the DLC. I, I mean, it's on PS5. Uh, I can play on PS5 now. Like, I'd love to play the game, see how well it runs. Cause, and the only thing that does suck though is if you have the the Ultimate Edition and the so the, the Control, if you have the regular Control, and then you have the Ultimate Edition, the saves don't actually work together. Oh. So it's like it's a, it's like a whole different know. game. So that's that kind of sucks. If you just want, you know, if you like, you like, so for me, like, I've already beat Control, uh, but the Ultimate Edition, my save doesn't work on the Ultimate Edition. So huh. it's basically just, I start all over again, but that's fine because I'd probably rather play through that game again and just play the DLC that way, especially with the Alan Wick tie in. Destruction All Stars, I have, I mean, we talked about it at the time. Uh, that game was like the seventh most important game on a uh, launch game on the PlayStation at, uh, for that console um and w- when we saw the game it was like they spent very little time discussing it and then yep. on top of that it's like this is a game that is strictly multiplayer and you spent very little time talking about it and we're coming out on a, on a launch day the same week that xbox is launching and there's six more important games coming out on launch day for that game that people care about and you're trying to sell it for 70 dollars. it's like i feel like this game on coming out on even on places plus this game isn't going to do well. This game just feels like this game's going to come out. It's going to have a good month, I bet, maybe a month or two, unless it just comes out and just stuns everybody. It's like a like Rocket League. Like no, like there was a little bit of buzz behind Rocket League, but it was like like you're in the know, kind of like kind of like we didn't even know, we didn't see it coming. But it's like the people like right that game. And it's look at it now. Like we don't need to talk about it anymore. We just, just look at fucking Rocket League, and it's like I'm not trying to. I mean, it's unfair comparison with, with structural. We've always tried to look for the next Rocket League. I, we always had like Fall Guys. But that's the next Rocket League. This game, next Rocket League. And it's just there's no next Rocket League. Rocket League is Rocket League. Um, but uh, anyways, structural All-Stars, I feel like that game is just it's going to come out. It might have a good month, maybe two, when it comes out. And it's, I mean, it, it's it's just no one's going to give a fuck about this game. Uh, and it's They even did the state of play. And what was weird is like they, they on YouTube they put it yeah, are you are you saying you did because you know or are you just saying you agreeing with me I'm asking. Well, I know they did. I just didn't okay. watch it. Okay, that's why because I've heard a lot of people like I, I wasn't trying to be mean. I'm sorry. I was just I was just curious because I've heard a lot of people like they put like people that like subscribe to the PlayStation on YouTube they put this on there, they didn't advertise it, it just people no. didn't know what happened. It didn't come out. I barely noticed it. I just was scrolling through YouTube and I was just like. Uh, I was reading the headlines. And I was like, "Wait, what the fuck's that?" I scroll, scrolling down, scrolling down. I'm like, "Wait, what was that?" Scroll back up. Like, oh, really? A state of play? It's like it was, there's a state of play that happened that no one knows. Like, very few people know about. And it's like it's right. I don't know. I mean, 
I don't know. It's like even like video game podcasts too, like didn't even cover the fact of the state of play, or to cover like they didn't even like <laughs> cover, like cover the like <laughs> I don't even know. Realize it. Yeah, it's like maybe did they not realize it, or is it just so no one gives a fuck that they just didn't talk about it. It's like state of play is even like Nintendo when they do state of when they do the directs about like these middling games, like there's still some buzz around. There's still some press releases about it. It's like I didn't see anything about this fucking game. And this is this is a free fucking game. I mean, I mean, free for PS, PS Plus, free game, whatever quotation marks. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's baffling. I don't know. I I'm gonna I'm gonna download. I'm gonna check it out. I feel like we've had a good few months with PS Plus. Like we'll, right. we'll go months without like eh, nothing, whatever. You know, you like same with, with game with uh, Xbox games with gold. And every now and again, you get like that. But it's like uh, yeah, like you're just talking about like you got bug snacks. What would you get for December? Um, Did we get anything for December? Man Eater. Man Eater was January, wasn't it? I thought man, I thought that Man Eater was December. Actually, January. No, 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 that is January. What was December twenty twenty? I forget. Look at that. I'm gonna look it up. Last month, I, maybe it was Bug Snacks for. Bug Snacks was a, no. Bug Snacks was a launch game. It was it was November. I remember that. Twenty twenty. P.S. Plus. I actually plus. forgot about that. Oh, we got Worms Rumble. So, eh, anyway. uh, that was I a PS. See. That was a PS5 game. Um, huh. So uh, whatever. So, uh, but I mean, yeah, we got Man Eater last month as a PS5 game. Then we get two PS5 games with Control and. Uh, I mean, so yeah, like you said, like that's a good point, Gables. Like that was you know, like if you have PS Plus but you don't have a PS5 yet, because like six people do, um, you know, like it makes all this like go on the go on the website, go on the PlayStation's website. And add it to your library, like to make sure. So when you have that console, you got these games. Cause I, you know, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not talking about structure and ulcers, but Control at least. Like Control is a fantastic game that I, I, more people should play. And I'm not, and I know it sold well, but more people should play that game. Um, yeah, good call, Gables. I think Monday is the last day you can do that on too. So only a couple days <clears> left. But uh, anyways, Gables. So uh, moving on. That's like I said, not a lot for news this week. It's been kind of a slow week. Um, you know, Gabe stocks. That's all that matters anymore. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so it's been a weird week. But uh, Gables, that's part where we talk about what we've been playing this past week. All right, you've been playing a new game that just came out. I want to hear about it. Yes. All right. So, like I've been mentioning throughout the episode, I had the chance to play, actually through halfway through Cyber Shadow. Now, Cyber Shadow and all is consisting of eleven chapters, ten main chapters and then there's like a final chapter which is quintessentially chapter 11 so a little bit of info about cyber shadow it is a game that's published by yacht club games but i think it's machine head i think it's the developer yeah it's basically like one guy yes it's basically like one man however in regards to the gameplay itself it's quintessentially a mashup between elements of ninja guy den and also you have like specific like Specific sub weapons you actually pick up, sort of like a Castlevania in and of itself, but not like more or less the game mechanics. No, the game plays like a Ninja Gaiden would. Only the difference is you actually get abilities in regards to like absorbing certain aspects from uh, random fellow clan members that you find. So after a particular boss battle or in the middle of some chapters, you'll actually acquire these new powers, and they're not like over extravagant stuff. They're kind of like base stuff. Like, for example, in one, you'll get the ability to throw the shuriken, and then the next chapter or something like that, you may get, like, a specific attack that uh, slices up in the air, kind of like a windmill sort of motion that does projectiles. But over the course of the game, you go ahead and you transverse these levels and stuff. You learn a little bit more inside of what ended up happening inside of this post-apocalyptic world in this post-apocalyptic city called Mecha City, I think it's called. But uh, you can essentially play as this main clan member and stuff, and your basic premise is to find out what happened to your master. So along the way, you get to discover quintessentially what had happened to the city since you've been knocked out. Quintessentially what happened is a big explosion happened inside of Mecha City, and you you, alongside a lot of your clan members and stuff, basically were wiped out. But this little robot pretty much revives you, right? And you have been totally decked out as, like, a 
pretty much like an android, essentially. So you're like a ninja android going through these luscious-looking levels, right? Now, the thing about this, about Cyber Shadow, first and foremost, is the game looks absolutely beautiful. The sprite work that was put in, the detail that was put inside the sprite work of this game is excellent. I love the bits of detail, kind of like the parallax sort of, like, layering that you would see in certain, like, uh, Super Nintendo games, certain NES games, certain Genesis games, like that generation you see at work here. With, obviously, a modern flair with give or take what uh, they're able, like some developers are able to produce inside of those type of games. The gameplay of itself, it's silky smooth. Really good in that retrospect. Quintessentially, precision platforming... Like attacks and everything else are keen, very intuitive. Frame rate is consistent. I haven't incurred any type of issues from uh, downloading it on from Game Pass. My Xbox hasn't been really hasn't been really like chugging or anything while that game's running. It's it's quite essentially like a like a small file size and stuff. So there's not really too much going on in like the performance aspect of it. But from what I've been encountered, it's like it runs well. The game plays excellent. The attacks and everything else were all like uh, buried, and that's honestly, long story short, when it comes to Cyber Shadow, there has been hardly any type of bad experiences I've ever heard with this game. Really good quality, in my honest opinion. The boss battles are interesting as well, they're not overly complicated. It takes you a few tries on some of them to actually get a close to the boss patterns and stuff. There was one boss that came in in particular, and it was like during the whole sewer. I think it was like not just a sewer. I think it was like this train level or something a little bit after. I want to say chapter four. Now that I think about it, yes, it was in chapter four. I go through all this terrain, right, and I'm encountering all these like these robots that do these projectiles and stuff. And when I get to this underground boss area, you see these floating platforms and stuff that you can hit, and they go splash into the water and they create these platforms. Now, I'm getting towards the center of it, and all of a sudden I hear the music start to play a little bit, and all of a sudden I see this big old mecha dragon, like, swimming underneath the darn freaking thing, and uh, it took me a while, because when I first encountered the thing, obviously I get hit by it, because I'm down the water, like, down to the extent where I'm hitting the, the hitbox of the boss, but it thing just, like, pops up right beside you and stuff, and it does two, like, two attacks, pretty essentially. It's first attack that does like this flare that like just reaches across the stage, right? And it's like it's particularly angled to where it'll span across like uh, about a quarter of the stage. So you have to time how to dodge this thing because if you go inside of him, he'll go through this like uh, diving motion to where he'll be right on top of you and it'll hit you and it'll do like two bars or so of damage each time you do that. But you gotta maintain hitting these platforms that are flying above because these platforms are only going to last in the water a certain amount of time and they get destroyed when the boss goes and dives up and down and stuff so my initial reaction when i tried playing this boss is okay maybe i'll just go from one side of the stage to the other side of the boss stage right well no it wasn't working because for one i would get caught up inside the platforms i was suffering damage from the platforms i was trying to hit i would get hit by the boss because I was not timing the dodge correctly in terms of, like, its blast. Because you have to do, like, the opposite direction. Like, maybe get one hit and then go the opposite direction of what he is firing off as, like, his thing. Now, his second attack is where he'll just stay there in idle animation. But if you're in the water, he does this, like, electric, like electric attack. So you've got to be on a platform. So you can uh, avoid that attack, but just do bits of damage and this and that. What I ended up doing was I isolated them to like a certain like uh, section of the stage to where I could just go back and forth, you know, just long enough to where I would be able to dodge his attack, but keep it to where he's only popping up like one side of me and the other side. Because I realized that he wouldn't be spawning way out. No, he would be spawning just a little bit off the like the section where I had spawned the platforms. So if I kept like a couple of platforms active at a time. He would just routinely go to one side of the platform or the other side of the platform based upon what he was doing, diving in between. So that's the first boss I've encountered inside this entire game to where it was complicated to that extent. It sounds like a lot, but in motion, 
when you get used to just narrowing down and experimenting with it, you get to experience like, okay, this is the exact pattern I need to go with. Now, before I was encountering bosses that were kind of like, uh, not as complicated. Like you do a couple attacks, dodge the big attack, then he flashes over to the other side, then you do the exact same thing. But every boss has a little, like, a critical phase to where if you get the first line of health depleted, they'll go into a desperation mode because they got their last bar of life and stuff active. So you do half, they start attacking harder and much more aggressively. And then a good example was, like, in stage, like, chapter three's boss, to where this is, like, this gigantic, like, flying robot, right? But it... But uh, it's, like, in the middle of the rain, you're on top of a building, but, yeah, you're facing off against this giant, like, mech, this flying mech dude or something like that. And he's just berating you, just, like, getting all these, like, uh, random projectiles up from above. You have to dodge that on top of doing all sorts of various crap. But, yeah, just learning the patterns of these specific bosses and stuff is been an absolute treat to do because it's more akin to, say, classic action games on like say the nes the super nintendo like say a ninja gaiden or a castlevania to where the bosses are not difficult to be overly difficult but you just got to memorize the patterns in regards to how they attack in one moray or how they do this specific way but another thing i would like to say is the way you learn certain techniques by going to like a couple of these random shrines and stuff. I really love it because you are transported to like another, like say an essence sort of dim, like an essence sort of like uh, frame of mind. I want to describe it as so quintessentially um, inside this game, you'll come across these statues, right? And you have the uh, option to meditate. And when you do this meditation, you get forth and transfer to a different realm, so to speak, to where you have other clans members that have escaped into this essence sort of realm. But, you get to talk to them, but then you have to face off against the creature of that statue in order to learn like a specific technique. Like there was this monkey that I had to go through and uh, race because it you it required you to use one of your attacks that you've learned previously, which was like a down attack thing, right? So when you earn this ability, you could actually jump off a project, like jump off of like certain like items right, that you would hit from above and stuff and then bounce up higher and stuff. It took me a few tries, but I was able to go through and finally beat him in a race, and then I earned an ability in and of itself to wall jump, to actually slide upon the walls and stuff and then bounce to and from. So from everything that I've experienced, I've only played through half of this game. As of when we're recording here, I'm like at chapter 6. And there's so much I can remember and so much vividly that I've experienced so far from the music, which is freaking fantastic. I mean, it's definitely a banger for sure. You think that Shovel Knight has some great tracks and stuff? This game, Cyber Shadow, definitely has some memorable tracks that I could still just hear humming in my head while just describing this to you guys. But what I have to say is, don't take my word for it. You have Xbox Live Game Pass. Download it. Try it. If you have it on, say, if it has the option to buy it on Steam, you can get it there. Obviously, Nintendo Switch has it for, like, I think 15 or 20 bucks currently. It's worth the price of admission. And quite honestly, if I enjoy this much, I may rebuy the game again on the Switch. <laughs> because it's one of those rare games where if I enjoy a game so much, I beat it and I want to buy it on another platform and play it through again, then that's a win. And so far, it's a strong case to that may be the point. But I got another half of the game to play through. Yeah. This looks like it's going to be an interesting, like a like bio level, like a bio lab sort of level. So on honestly, I'll probably have a little bit more in terms of that. But other game stuff, I haven't really played too much, other than more of Dragon Ball Fighters in terms of memorizing, like combo chains and stuff for the DLC characters. But yeah, that's it for my gaming stuff. What about you, Tyler? Oh really? Okay. Um. So we we would we just spent a decent chunk of time talking about Game Pass <laughs> and PS Plus. And it's funny now we're you're talking about a Game Pass game. 
and I'm about to talk about a PS Plus game. So uh, I played Man Eater. Um, I played for about an hour, um, and I, I like this game a lot. It's really enjoyable. It's fun. It's like this isn't like a ten out of ten or nine out of nine, nine out of ten or whatever. This it's just like it's a it, it's basically just like it's a fun like those like fun like double A kind of games where it's like um not a game of sixty dollars, but it's like I, I can't remember what it came out for, but it was a you know, they said the PS five update whatever came out for PS plus. Uh, right. And I remember seeing the deals on like Black Friday for like like twenty dollars and even cheaper. Um, I'm glad you know I'm just getting for PS plus obviously, but um it's i like the game a lot it's fun and it's quirky and it's like it's basically like it's making fun of like so it's a game like you, you play as a shark right but in this game like there's like oh, i can't remember something pete is his name but with him it's like he's basically he's like on a reality show like you know it's like those reality shows where they're like you know they're they're on like the boats like you know the whaler kind of shows like it's basically uh a making fun of that or it's like he's just like this stereotypical over the top guy making fun of every fucking you know like uh show we've ever seen out there of, of people on the on the out on the you know deep sea fishing kind of shit and like his thing is he he gets sharks and uh capture sharks shit like that and kind of how it starts is like he uh so you start off and you're a uh a shark and he's trying to catch you and um it's based this, this is like the tutorial part and so minor spoilers, I guess, for this. But he ends up catching right. you and killing you. But it finds out he cuts you open and he finds a baby shark in you. <clears throat> and then the baby shark escapes. And now you're the baby shark. And you got to like you level up. And as you level up, you get bigger. And the open world revenge story. You like, like basically <laughs> he's like the name of that guy is I'm assuming you want to you know, he get revenge for killing your mom. And uh, yeah, as you like, it's basically like a, a kind of like I don't know, it's like open world, but it's a very small section. I don't, I'm very oh, little. I see. Yeah, but it's like a uh, like you you swim around and like you 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 like you, everybody's got lo- like you can see every fish has levels. So there's like a level one turtle or a level one um, goop gout gooper. I don't fucking know what it's called. Uh, I'm not a fish guy, but um, you eat them, you get stuff to like upgrade your to like level up, you get XP, and then also upgrade your right. like sonar or bites or whatever you can upgrade. You can you. you as you uh, level up, you become like it's like I'm like level four. And you're a teen now, and you, like, you get bigger and bigger, and you can take on like there's alligators that just fuck you up. You can't do a fight with them. Like two bites and like two two hits, you're dead. And you swim around like you have like um like R1 is like uh like the is the evade. Um L2 is like a kind of like a kind of like a little boost, and R2 is like how you like you like lunge and attack. And you can also like you can swim. You can like jump. There's a, I think it's L2. You can like if you're like swimming up towards like the surface, you have L2 as you're getting close, and they'll kind of do like a lunge out of the water and jump back in, and then you can attack boats that way. And uh, as you get bigger, you can do more damage mm-hmm. and take more hits, stuff like that. And like you get in fights with like uh, hunters or other animals or fish, you kill other fish and you get you get, you get health back. But um, the the big issue with this game is I played it for like 40 minutes, and um, Oh well, my I played God. For, I think a little more, about an hour, but about 30, 40 minutes in, my right fucking index finger was killing me because you just smash an R2 right. the entire fucking time. R2 and R1, because R1 is a vague, R2 is attack. So it's like, like it's like you're so used to like the um, like X Y circle, not X Y, but X circle square, whatever the sacred symbols. You're so used to like, you know, the face buttons being like the buttons you use to like do things with, and like now you're like. It's all like all the L1, L2, R2, R1, R2. It's like like your 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 body is just not built, or your fingers are not built to like mash those buttons so often. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe it's a PS5 controller thing too with with the Dual Sense. But it's like I was like, I'm like I'm enjoying this game, but it's like it's physically painful for me to keep playing this game. My like my hand, my fingers are cramping up. My my hand hurts. It's like I was fighting through it, but like I end up like after like it's like I want to keep playing this, but it's like it hurts. Like, it's like, I, I like it, but it's like, I wish I could, like, I wish it was like, I don't know, maybe you could change controls around it. I don't know if it would be as good, you know, with the, with those control schemes, but it's like, yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I, I like this game a lot. It's enjoyable. It's a fun, like, like, the, I'm like, like I said, like, this isn't going to be like a game that we're going to talk about five years from now. Oh, man, remember how great Man Eater was? But it's like, it's a fun, like, one of those, like, I feel like this is one of those fun, like, games you get 
for a weekend and you play through and you just it was fun for that weekend and you never think about it again kind of things um and this has the potential to be that kind of game like i'm not trying to downgrade it at all i think it's an enjoyable game but yeah it's like i i want to play more of it but it's just like man like the rest of the night this is like my like it wasn't just like yep. in the in the moment like it hurt it's like the rest of the night it's like it's like when you like you you've had like those like days like where you just like yeah like moving you know game like you just moved like you, you're just like physically everything like physically hurts <laughs> and you're just you're physically exhausted it's that but all in your index finger your entire fucking index finger is just like all the pain of that through your whole body just hits the one that little index finger you have and that's 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 where i was well it's like i, I like this game a lot but i, I want to play more of it but it's like i don't want to I don't like your control schemes. And it's like, like, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I know people that have played it yeah. and love it. And it's, it, it, there's definitely, there's a lot of charm behind it. It's like, it's like that. It really is that perfect game for like, kind of like, it's a game. Like I want, like right now where I'm like, I'm not like in the mood to jump in anything. I don't want to play that. Like, I don't want a 20, 30 hour fucking thing. I just want like a fun, dumb game to jump into where I don't think about it, you know? And like, this is like, like oh man this this like this is hitting at the right time right now it's january we said that all that we had a new consoles we had a bunch of fucking new triple a games it's like not like we're in that in between phase where it's like we're in that calm before the storm before shit gets real and it's just like this is like that perfect game it's like fuck i want to play more of you but it hurts not just my soul but also my index finger so uh yeah that's that's all i've been playing other than that i I'm, there's a couple of games I want I want to play like uh I, I, like I mentioned last week about Scott. Yes, I did on the world. PlayStation 3. That have you have you, have you played ago, it? You I played actually, that game? I'm curious. Most recently when I rebought a PlayStation 3 for dirt cheap, I actually downloaded oh, okay. the game and I can technically play it right now if I really wanted to. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Actually, that sounds like a good idea. Was it like 15, should, 20 should bucks? You know, PS4 so we can play together. It's got all in oh, multiplayer. Okay. Well, that's something to think about. All right. It's fifteen bucks. Yeah. I play. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I want. I want to play the good. game. I just. I I just need to now play it. But yeah, I know uh, you. If you want to play, if you get a game, let me know because I'll play with you. Um. Because. <laughs> and I can I can use you to the coast. This is kind of like how I'm coasting oh, yeah. with you as this a, game, on this podcast. That game can be difficult. I'm coast you and Scott I mean, Cole. The reason why I was fucking hard. I remember playing with 360. I'm like this guy. I was able to level up Scott like. Be a River City ransom method and yeah. stuff like that by alternating certain combos and then like just doing blocks at the right time and then obviously upgrading from what uh, pools I could upgrade for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I remember playing through because Scott Pilgrim versus the World is legitimately one of my favorite movies. Soundtrack's time, banging so. though. With on the like Gucci. I bought it. And I was like, oh man, no. I'm yeah, it's Amaguchi that I'm does the soundtrack to Scott Pilgrim versus the World for the game. Oh, is it? Okay, I, I, I need. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I'm just a, I'm an Ed, Edgar Wright fanboy. Yeah. Who, who directs the movie, and he did like um, oh, uh, fuck, what's something? Shaun of the Dead, uh, Hot Fuzz, stuff like that. Like I, I I'm <laughs> just a fanboy of him. So, uh, the the soundtrack in that movie also fantastic. Fuck, man, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm probably gonna end up watching Scott Pilgrim vs. the World oh, fuck, for the hundredth so time after this podcast because <laughs> I got some Pizza Hut leftover in the fucking uh, uh, fridge that uh, it's stuffed crust too. Um, I, I'm I'm gonna gonna eat that as soon as this podcast is over because I it's Sunday now technically here <laughs> and I didn't eat on Saturday so Papacito is hungry. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> four pieces in there. It's, it's, it's hollow for me. I'm I'm five gables deep, <laughs> not including you. Just the just beers. <laughs> oh, it's good beer. It's all beer. I, I'm, you know what? I'm not upset about a twelve pack. A little pricey at twenty bucks, but not bad. It's all for the bit. I do it all for the bit. Uh, uh, but anyways, actually, I'm good. Uh, for gables, week. if uh, you don't have anything else you want to talk about, okay. Cool. Uh, then I think that's gonna do it for us this week. Uh, a little different, you know, doing it on a Saturday. I appreciate Gables. Uh, I asked him very like like an hour notice. Hey, can we do it tonight instead, so I can watch the Royal Rumble and torture myself? 
yeah, all right, cool, here we are. So um, and then talking with me for two hours about football. Um, and then me going on a GameStop, GameStop stock rant. Uh, but yeah, if you guys enjoy this, uh, uh, check us out. We're on everything. Uh, I'm, you know, I, like I know the audio, the visual stuff isn't perfect. Uh, I was doing this Twitch streaming stuff. Uh, it's just something we're trying out. Working out every, I think uh, every week we're gonna try to get better and better at it. Work out the kinks, figure out what's going wrong. Uh, but you know, it's just, we're, you know, it is what it is at a certain point. But you know, we're trying. Um, so I hope you guys like this. Uh, watching it live. If you want to watch us live, we typically record on Sundays. Some nights record on on Saturdays, but for the, I would say. 9% of the time we're gonna be on Sunday nights around nine o'clock central, seven Pacific, West Coast, best coast time. Um, 9:30, 7:30 maybe better better way to put it. Um, but uh, check us out twitch.tv slash uh, Drunk Nerds Podcast, or if you go to twitch.tv, just type in Drunk Nerds and you'll find us on there. Uh, on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, uh, iTunes, anywhere you you go listen to pods, uh, get casted. We are on them. Just look up Drunk Nerds Podcast, Drunk Nerds Podcast, Drunk Nerds. Podcast, Drunk Nerds. You'll find us. Uh, leave us reviews in those. Five stars, comments, subscribe, follow, likes, thumbs ups. Whatever you can do. Shares. Shares probably most important, honestly. Uh, whatever you do to help do that, we'd really, really appreciate it. That helps us the most. Um, you know, our, our downloads are way up on uh, when I check out our Lipsons account. Um, you know, I just like to see some more engagement. Uh, we don't, engagement's not what we want it to be. So more engagement will be better. That's what will help us more than anything. Uh, so yeah, like, follow, share, all that fun shit. Uh, ring the bell on twitch.tv. I guess that's something people do. Um, that notifies you whenever we go online. Uh, so if we're just we're doing the podcast, or maybe we're just doing a stream. Mm-hmm. We do that every so often. Not very often, but we do it so often. Every so often. Uh, ring that bell, and we'll be on there. Uh, so yeah, uh, appreciate you guys checking us out. And I have been Graham uh, Gables. I was host, I was so until next time, everyone, I hope you have yourself a fun week. Definitely hope you play some fun games, but most importantly, thank you for enjoying the another fun-filled episode of the Drunk Dash Nerds podcast. Yeah. And hey, Gables. Too sweet, man. Too sweet. See ya. Bye, guys. <laughs>